Weapons. Let's talk about them. When I was just starting out on the Content Co-op profile, another Jerry, really, bro? I immediately borrowed 200,000 coins from Sample, which I never returned, by the way, don't remind him, and purchased the Raider Axe. This thing is seriously great for super early game, and I didn't really have a problem with damage at all. Until I did. Because I'm kinda awful, I'm still not able to one-shot zealots with it, but that's not the game's fault. What I feel like is an issue though is finding a good weapon for dungeons as an Iron Man. I'm currently a Kata 23 Berserker and the weapon I'm using is a Hyper Cleaver, which is alright and its AoE damage really helps when there's a bunch of mobs bunched up together, but it's just not good enough for Floor 5. Now you could say that I'm not supposed to do Floor 5 with this kind of gear, and rather get something like an Aspect of the Dragons instead, which is probably true. But tell me, why is the first actually good dungeon sword a drop from floor 5? But Power Miner, the adaptive blade drops from floor 2. Okay, and? Like seriously, who came up with this thing? One point of damage per tier you're gonna shed for ever giving it a chance. <laughs> Anyhow, this whole conundrum got me thinking. Maybe if I went through every sword in the game, I'd find something good. So I did. Now I won't talk about absolutely every single weapon. I'll skip early game stuff even if it's good, such as the Undead Sword, because it's good for about 7.54 seconds before you inevitably replace it with something else. Ooh, shiny. So most of the commons and uncommons aren't on the list because I just don't care enough about them, okay? Good. What I do care about however is the subscribe button, getting very close to 30 billion subscribers, so click red button please. Thank. Oh yeah, and the like button as well. Now I would just lump the aspect of the Jerry along with the other awful ones, but I hate Jerry enough to give this one its own little tier. And there we go. Moving on to the Rogue Sword, the stats on this thing are whatever, but the ability is actually incredibly useful for speed in dungeons, especially if you're a mage. At the start of a run you can just spam it as much as you can, and you'll be starring in the new Sonic movie before you know it. But that's all it's good for, so even though I'm really attached to it, I'm gonna have to put it in B. The Raider Axe is seriously great, and very cheap for early game. If you're planning to use it a lot, it's gonna do you good. If you aren't though, just buy the Aspect of the End instead. While its damage quickly falls off, its ability is amazing for all stages of the game, and is the single best mobility item by far. A and S for these two fellas respectively. Oh yeah, and it has an upgrade which just makes it even better. S as well. The zombie sword and its upgrades are great for healing when in a pinch. B for Beeling. Now time for some... Disappointments. The Recluse Fang is reclusive for a good reason. The Golem Sword used to be okay back in 1999 when everyone was still scared of the number 2000 and the Tactician Sword seems like it could be alright but just requires too much effort at the end of the day. The Edible Mace is an interesting one though. Its only relevant feature is the double damage on next hit which people used to abuse a ton back when bone meringues were still broken. No real use for it now though. D tier just because I feel like it could be broken again one day. The Endstone Sword is really unique. Making you immune to damage for a full 5 seconds is immensely useful for tier 4 Enderman Slayer and Diana. But that's pretty much it. Although I have no doubt it'll find more use in the future. Similarly to how dinosaurs used to roam the earth, the Leaping Sword also used to be good, although its ability is still pretty fun, so D tier. Oh yeah, and it has an upgrade, also D tier. The Sword of Revelations is great for Diana if your main goal is imminent death, because anyone who doesn't die will have enough coins to buy the Daedalus Axe anyways. C tier, since it does have Iron Man use. Speaking of the Daedalus Axe, it's the best weapon for Diana, and its pet stat copying ability can prove useful when wanting more magic find. A tier. The Soul Whip is one of the only weapons that still works with sword swapping, and it works really well. It's practically mandatory if you want to farm ghosts. It's also great for regening mana when doing tier 4 Enderman, one of those situational but very useful ones. B tier. In fact no, A tier, because it's a fishing weapon, and that's way cooler than just a sword. The Midas Sword is yet another relic of the past. They've really tried supporting this one too first giving it the Gilded Reforge, which made it the best sword in the game for like a grand total of 2 weeks, and then the Golden Dragon, which sadly didn't really do anything for it at all. The issue with it is that at the end of the day, it's very expensive and offers nothing beyond being just another haha big damage sword. 
D tier for its unforgettable legacy. Finally, something fun. The Phantom Rod is a really unique and underrated weapon. Its main use is being able to completely stun lock mini bosses in dungeons. So if you're a berserker who's having trouble with those, just hook them and right click away. That's basically the only thing it does though. B tier because fishing weapon. The Pigman Sword is completely outdated. Goodbye Pigman Sword. Ah yes, the aspect of the dragons. Once the holy grail of weapons, now reduced to a super early game weapon, which costs like a tenth of what it used to. It's still really good though. Most players will purchase it after the Raider Axe and for good reason. It's cheap and effective. Aspect of the Dragons? More like Aspect of the A tier. <laughs> Get it? Because it's in, in the A tier? No? Okay, Dungeon Swords. Like half of them are too bad to even be worth mentioning. Here they are now. And there they go. The only reason the Silent Death isn't on that list is because it has some Iron Man applications. But it's not particularly impressive anyways. The Conjuring completely sucks as a sword, but is great for its ability giving you a guided sheep, which is very helpful for every class that isn't mage. The Hyper Cleaver actually surprised me. I wouldn't really recommend it unless you're Iron Man, because you could just buy an Aspect of the Dragons for a similar price, but its Iron Man use is good enough to get a low B tier from me. Its upgrade would also be good, but too bad for you it costs 5 trillion coins, and is only purchasable after beating floor 7? Ah yes, can't wait to use this in master mode. I'm gonna be honest, didn't even know the spirit sword existed. So I'm gonna put it in the newly created sugarcane farm tier. The livid dagger is the big daddy of mid game dungeons, giving 100% crit chance and attack speed alongside some pretty useful abilities and good stats, it's just a good sword overall, even outside dungeons. The flower of truth gets a lot of hate, but A, it's incredibly cheap, B, it has no requirements to use whatsoever, you could literally be Comet minus 5 and still be able to use it, and C, its clearing ability is really good, although its outside of dungeons use is very limited. High B tier, almost A. The Shadow of Fury is one of those haha big damage swords which pairs really well with one for all, making it do insane amounts of left click damage in exchange for everything else. A tier. The Fell Sword is weird. With its decent 190 base damage and the ability of getting up to 100 extra damage on it, it seems pretty broken for its price. And then you realize that this whole description is a lie, because the extra damage doesn't scale with Catacombs levels. That being said, it's still an all right choice for Iron Man. C tier. The Wither Cloak Sword is a utility weapon used in Floor 7 to not take lava damage, as well as in the Jungle Temple parkour and when AFKing Enderman if you're just that cracked. I probably missed some of its applications as well. A tier for its varied use. The Giant Sword is the most haha -ha big damage sword of them all. 500 damage is absolutely insane, especially when paired with one for all. It's used for ghost farming and is the primary LCM weapon. S tier. Now that we've gone over the Giant Sword, the Emerald Blade is either a better or worse version of it, depending on just how many schmackaroos you have on you. For mid-game players this can serve as a budget alternative to the giant sword, whereas for end-game players it's an even better version of it outside dungeons. S tier as well. The four wither swords are the end reward of dungeons. The Hyperion is the best RCM weapon by far, and king of all weapons up till master mode. The Astria is basically a tankier Hyperion, great for tanks and lower level mages. The Scylla is the best out of all four as a healing weapon since it gives the most grid damage. And lastly, the Valkyrie is only really useful for Berserkers, but is extremely good in the hands of a skilled user, swapping it with an Axe of the Shredded. They're all great and you can choose which one suits you best. The Slayer Swords are pretty boring, so I don't want to spend too much time on them. The one outlier is the Axe of the Shredded, which is so good that it sees use in dungeons by Berserkers. Its ability coupled with the fact that the current highest floor includes a lot of zombies really makes it shine. Apart from this though, most Slayer weapons are very straightforward. The Zombie ones are good for Zombies, the Enderman ones are good for Endermen, and the Spider and Wolf ones are good for nothing. Throw those away. Lastly, Necromancy weapons. There's two of these, the Necromancer Sword and Reaper Scythe. Both of which are great for Necromancy, but that's a very niche aspect of Skyblock. Although if you think about it, the Reaper Scythe is actually just a better Shadow Fury. 
it's cheaper and has more damage so it works better with one for all. What more could you really ask for? A tier. In fact I'm moving the Shadow Fury down to B tier. Only thing saving it from C is that its ability is pretty cool. So what did I learn? Maybe the Fell Sword would be a good choice for me. Apart from that, it seems like I'ma have to grind out 150 F5 runs for a livid dagger. I didn't cover mage weapons or bows because I didn't have the time to do so. But I might make a part 2 if you all like this video enough. Goodbye now.